The Russo-Japanese War was fought between the Empire of Japan and the Russian Empire during 1904 and 1905 over rival imperial ambitions in Manchuria and the Korean Empire. Four, the major theaters of military operations were in Liaodong Peninsula and Mukden in southern Manchuria and the Yellow Sea and the Sea of Japan. Russia sought a warm water port on the Pacific Ocean both for its navy and for maritime trade. Vladivostok remained ice-free and operational only during the summer. Port Arthur, a naval base in Liaodong province leased to Russia by the Qing dynasty of China from 1897, was operational year-round. Russia had pursued an expansionist policy east of the Urals, in Siberia and the Far East. Since the reign of Ivan the Terrible in the 16th century. 5. Since the end of the First Sino-Japanese War in 1895. Japan had feared Russian encroachment would interfere with its plans to establish a sphere of influence in Korea and Manchuria. Seeing Russia as a rival. Japan offered to recognize Russian dominance in Manchuria in exchange for recognition of the Korean Empire as being within the Japanese sphere of influence. Russia refused and demanded the establishment of a neutral buffer zone between Russia and Japan in Korea, north of the 39th parallel. The Imperial Japanese government perceived this as obstructing their plans for expansion into mainland Asia and chose to go to war. After negotiations broke down in 1904, the Imperial Japanese Navy opened hostilities in a surprise attack on the Russian Eastern Fleet at Port Arthur, China on 9 February, OS 27 January, 1904. Although Russia suffered a number of defeats, Emperor Nicholas II remained convinced that Russia could still win if it fought on. He chose to remain engaged in the war and await the outcomes of key naval battles. As hope of victory dissipated, he continued the war to preserve the dignity of Russia by averting a humiliating peace. Russia ignored Japan's willingness early on to agree to an armistice and rejected the idea of bringing the dispute to the permanent court of arbitration at The Hague. After the decisive naval battle of Tsushima, the war was concluded with the Treaty of Portsmouth, the 5th of September, OS the 23rd of August, 1905, mediated by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. The complete victory of the Japanese military surprised international observers and transformed the balance of power in both East Asia and Europe, resulting in Japan's emergence as a great power and a decline in the Russian Empire's prestige and influence in Europe. Russia's incurrence of substantial casualties and losses for a cause that resulted in humiliating defeat contributed to a growing domestic unrest which culminated in the 1905 Russian Revolution and severely damaged the prestige of the Russian autocracy. After the Meiji Restoration in 1868, the Meiji government endeavored to assimilate Western ideas, technological advances and ways of warfare. By the late 19th century, Japan had transformed itself into a modernized industrial state. The Japanese wanted to be recognized as equal with the Western powers. The Meiji Restoration had been intended to make Japan a modernized state, not a westernized one, and Japan was an imperialist power, looking towards overseas expansionism. 7. In the years 1869-73, the Saikanron, conquer Korea argument, had bitterly divided the Japanese elite. One faction wanted to conquer Korea immediately. Another wanted to wait until Japan was further modernized before embarking on a war to conquer Korea. Significantly, no one in the Japanese elite ever accepted the idea that the Koreans had the right to be independent. With only the question of timing dividing the two factions, 8. In much the same way that Europeans used the backwardness of African and Asian nations as a reason for why they had to conquer them. For the Japanese elite the backwardness of China and Korea was proof of the inferiority of those nations, thus giving the Japanese the right to conquer them.
9. Count Inoue Kaoru. The foreign minister gave a speech in 1887 saying, what we must do is to transform our empire and our people. Make the empire like the countries of Europe and our people like the peoples of Europe. Going on to say that the Chinese and Koreans had essentially forfeited their right to be independent by not modernizing. 9. Much of the pressure for an aggressive foreign policy in Japan came from below. With the advocates of people's rights movement calling for an elected parliament also favoring an ultra-nationalist line that took it for granted the Japanese had the right to annex Korea. As the people's rights movement was led by those who favored invading Korea in the years 1869 to 73. 9. As part of the modernization process in Japan. Social Darwinist ideas about the survival of the fittest were common in Japan from the 1880s onward and many ordinary Japanese resented the heavy taxes imposed by the government to modernize Japan. Demanding something tangible like an overseas colony as a reward for their sacrifices. 10. Furthermore, the educational system of Meiji Japan was meant to train the schoolboys to be soldiers when they grew up, and as such, Japanese schools indoctrinated their students into Bushido, way of the warrior, the fierce code of the samurai. 9. Having indoctrinated the younger generations into Bushido, the Meiji elite found themselves faced with a people who clamored for war, and regarded diplomacy as a weakness. The British Japanologist Richard Story wrote that the biggest misconception about Japan in the West was that the Japanese people were the docile instruments of the elite. When in fact much of the pressure for Japan's wars from 1894 to 1941 came from the ordinary people, who demanded a tough foreign policy intended to engage in riots and assassination when foreign policy was perceived to be pusillanimous. 9. Though the Meiji oligarchy refused to allow liberal democracy, they did seek to appropriate some of the demands of the people's rights movement by allowing an elected imperial diet in 1890, with limited powers and an equally limited franchise, and by pursuing an aggressive foreign policy towards Korea. 9. In 1884, Japan had encouraged a coup in the Kingdom of Korea by a pro-Japanese reformist faction, which led to the conservative government calling upon China for help, leading to a clash between Chinese and Japanese soldiers in Seoul. 11. At the time, Tokyo did not feel ready to risk a war with China, and the crisis was ended by the Convention of Tientsin, which left Korea more strongly in the Chinese sphere of influence though it did give the Japanese the right to intervene in Korea. 11. All through the 1880s and early 1890s, the government in Tokyo was regularly criticized for not being aggressive enough in Korea, leading Japanese historian Masao Maruyama to write, Just as Japan was subject to pressure from the great powers, so she would apply pressure to still weaker countries, a clear case of the transfer psychology. In this regard it is significant that ever since the Meiji period demands for a tough foreign policy have come from the common people, that is, from those who are at the receiving end of oppression at home. Tsarist Russia, as a major imperial power, had ambitions in the east. By the 1890s it had extended its realm across Central Asia to Afghanistan, absorbing local states in the process. The Russian Empire stretched from Poland in the west to the Kamchatka Peninsula in the east. 12. With its construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway to the port of Vladivostok, Russia hoped to further consolidate its influence and presence in the region. In the Tsushima incident of 1861 Russia had directly assaulted Japanese territory. The first major war the Empire of Japan fought following the Meiji Restoration was against China, from 1894 to 1895. The war revolved around the issue of control and influence over Korea under the rule of the Joseon dynasty. From the 1880s onward, 
there had been vigorous competition for influence in Korea between China and Japan. 13. The Korean court was prone to factionalism and at the time was badly divided between a reformist camp that was pro-Japanese and a more conservative faction that was pro-Chinese. 13. In 1884, a pro-Japanese coup attempt was put down by Chinese troops, and a residency under General Yuan Shikai was established in Seoul. 13. A peasant rebellion led by the Tonghek religious movement led to a request by the Korean government for the Qing dynasty to send in troops to stabilize the country. 13. The Empire of Japan responded by sending their own force to Korea to crush the Tonghek and installed a puppet government in Seoul. China objected and war ensued. Hostilities proved brief. With Japanese ground troops routing Chinese forces on the Liaodong Peninsula and nearly destroying the Chinese Beiyang fleet in the Battle of the Yalu River. Japan and China signed the Treaty of Shimonoseki, which ceded the Liaodong Peninsula and the island of Taiwan to Japan. After the peace treaty, Russia, Germany, and France forced Japan to withdraw from the Liaodong Peninsula. The leaders of Japan did not feel that they possessed the strength to resist the combined might of Russia, Germany and France, and so gave in to the ultimatum. At the same time, the Japanese did not abandon their attempts to force Korea into the Japanese sphere of influence. On 8 October 1895, Queen Min of Korea, the leader of the anti-Japanese and pro-Chinese faction at the Korean court was murdered by Japanese agents within the halls of the Gyeongbokgung Palace. An act that backfired badly as it turned Korean public opinion against Japan. 14. In early 1896, King Gojong of Korea fled to the Russian legation in Seoul. Believing that his life was in danger from Japanese agents, and Russian influence in Korea started to predominate. 14. In the aftermath of the flight of the king. A popular uprising overthrew the pro-Japanese government and several cabinet ministers were lynched on the streets. 14. In 1897, Russia occupied the Liaodong Peninsula, built the Port Arthur Fortress, and based the Russian Pacific Fleet in the port. Russia's acquisition of Port Arthur was primarily an anti-British move to counter the British occupation of Wei Highway, but in Japan, this was perceived as an anti-Japanese move. 15. Germany occupied Zhaozhou Bay, built the Tsingtao Fortress, and based the German East Asia Squadron in this port. Between 1897 and 1903, the Russians built the Chinese Eastern Railway. CER, in Manchuria. 16. The Chinese Eastern Railroad was owned jointly by the Russian and Chinese governments. But the company's management was entirely Russian. The line was built to the Russian gauge and Russian troops were stationed in Manchuria to protect rail traffic on the CER from bandit attacks. 16. The headquarters of the CER company was located in the new Russian-built city of Harbin. The Moscow of the Orient. From 1897 onwards, Manchuria, while still nominally part of the Great Qing Empire, started to resemble more and more a Russian province. In December 1897, a Russian fleet appeared off Port Arthur. After three months, in 1898, China and Russia negotiated a convention by which China leased, to Russia, Port Arthur, Talianwin, and the surrounding waters. The two parties further agreed that the convention could be extended by mutual agreement. The Russians clearly expected such an extension. For they lost no time in occupying the territory and in fortifying Port Arthur, their sole warm water port on the Pacific coast and of great strategic value. A year later, to consolidate their position, the Russians began to build a new railway from Harbin through Mukden to Port Arthur. The South Manchurian Railroad. 16. The development of the railway became a contributory factor to the Boxer Rebellion. When Boxer forces burned the railway stations. 17. 
the Russians also began to make inroads into Korea. A large point of Russia's growing influence in Korea was Gojong's internal exile to the Russian legation. 18. A pro-Russian cabinet emerged in the Korean Empire. In 1901, Tsar Nicholas II told Prince Henry of Prussia, I do not want to seize Korea but under no circumstances can I allow Japan to become firmly established there. That will be a casus belli. 19. By 1898 they had acquired mining and forestry concessions near the Yalu and Tumen rivers, 20, causing the Japanese much anxiety. Japan decided to attack before the Russians completed the Trans-Siberian Railway. The Russians and the Japanese both contributed troops to the Eight-Nation Alliance sent in 1900 to quell the Boxer Rebellion and to relieve the international legations besieged in the Chinese capital. Beijing. Russia had already sent 177,000 soldiers to Manchuria, nominally to protect its railways under construction. Though the Qing Imperial Army and the Boxer rebels united to fight against the invasion, they were quickly overrun and ejected from Manchuria. After the Boxer Rebellion, 100,000 Russian soldiers were stationed in Manchuria. 21. The Russian troops settled in. 22 and despite assurances they would vacate the area after the crisis. By 1903 the Russians had not established a timetable for withdrawal, 23, and had actually strengthened their position in Manchuria. Pre-war negotiations edit the Japanese statesman Ito Hirobumi started to negotiate with the Russians. He regarded Japan as too weak to evict the Russians militarily. So he proposed giving Russia control over Manchuria in exchange for Japanese control of northern Korea. Of the five Genro, elder statesmen, who made up the Meiji oligarchy, Ito Hirobumi and Count Inoue Kaoru opposed the idea of war against Russia on financial grounds, while Katsura Taro, Komura Jutaro and Field Marshal Yamagata Aritomo favored war. 24. Meanwhile, Japan and Britain had signed the Anglo-Japanese alliance in 1902 the British seeking to restrict naval competition by keeping the Russian Pacific seaports of Vladivostok and Port Arthur from their full use. Japan's alliance with the British meant, in part, that if any nation allied itself with Russia during any war against Japan, then Britain would enter the war on Japan's side. Russia could no longer count on receiving help from either Germany or France without the danger of British involvement in the war. With such an alliance, Japan felt free to commence hostilities if necessary. Citation needed. The 1890s and 1900s marked the height of the Yellow Peril propaganda by the German government. And the German Emperor Wilhelm II, r. 1888 to 1918 often wrote letters to his cousin Emperor Nicholas II of Russia, praising him as the save and urging Russia forward in Asia. 25, 26, from November 1894 onward. Wilhelm had been writing letters praising Nicholas as Europe's defender, assuring the Tsar that God himself had chosen Russia to defend Europe from the alleged threat. 27. On 1 November 1902 Wilhelm wrote to Nicholas that, certain symptoms in the East seem to show that Japan is becoming a rather restless customer, and, it is evident to every unbiased mind that Korea must and will be Russian. 25. Wilhelm ended his letter with the warning that Japan and China would soon unite against Europe. Writing. Twenty to thirty million Chinese, supported by a half dozen Japanese divisions, led by competent, intrepid Japanese officers. Full of hatred for Christianity, that is a vision of the future that cannot be contemplated without concern, and it is not impossible. On the contrary, it is the realization of the yellow peril which I described a few years ago and I was ridiculed by the majority of people for my graphic depiction of it. Your devoted friend and cousin, Willie, Admiral of the Atlantic, 28, 
Wilhelm aggressively encouraged Russia's ambitions in Asia because France, Russia's closest ally since 1894, was less than supportive of Russian expansionism in Asia. And it was believed in Berlin that German support of Russia might break up the Franco-Russian alliance and lead to a new German-Russian alliance. 25. The French had made it clear that they disapproved of Nicholas's forward policy in Asia. The French premier Maurice Rouvier, in office, made a December 1887, publicly declaring that the Franco-Russian alliance applied only in Europe, not to Asia, 29, and that France would remain neutral if Japan attacked Russia, 30. Need quotation to verify. The American President Theodore Roosevelt, in office 1901-1909, who was attempting to mediate the Russian-Japanese dispute, complained that Wilhelm's yellow peril propaganda, which strongly implied that Germany might go to war against Japan in support of Russia, encouraged Russian intransigence. 31. On 24 July 1905, in a letter to the British diplomat Cecil Spring Rice, Roosevelt wrote that Wilhelm bore partial responsibility for the war as he has done all he could to bring it about, charging that Wilhelm's constant warnings about the yellow peril had made the Russians uninterested in compromise as Nicholas believed that Germany would intervene if Japan attacked. 32. The implicit promise of German support suggested by Wilhelm's yellow peril speeches and letters to Nicholas led many decision makers in St. Petersburg to believe that Russia's military weaknesses in the Far East, like the uncompleted Trans-Siberian Railroad Line, did not matter. They assumed that the Reich would come to Russia's assistance if war should come. In fact, neither Wilhelm nor his Chancellor Prince Bernhard von Bülow, in office, 1900-1909, had much interest in East Asia. And Wilhelm's letters to Nicholas praising him as Europe's savior against the yellow peril were really meant to provoke change in the balance of power in Europe. As Wilhelm believed that any Russian entanglement with Japan would break up the Franco-Russian alliance and lead to Nicholas signing an alliance with Germany. 26. This was especially the case as Germany had embarked upon the Tirpitz plan and a policy of wealth politic from 1897 meant to challenge Britain's position as the world's leading power. Since Britain was allied to Japan, then if Germany could manipulate Russia and Japan into going to war with each other, this in turn would allegedly lead to Russia turning towards Germany. 26. Furthermore, Wilhelm believed if a Russian-German alliance emerged, France would be compelled to join it. He also hoped that having Russia pursue an expansionist policy in Asia would distract and keep Russia out of the Balkans, thus removing the main source of tension between Russia and Germany's ally Austria-Hungary. 25. During the war, Nicholas, who took at face value Wilhelm's yellow peril speeches, placed much hope in German intervention on his side. More than once Nicholas chose to continue the war out of the belief that the Kaiser would come to his aid. 33. Despite previous assurances that Russia would completely withdraw from Manchuria the forces it had sent to crush the Boxer Rebellion by 8 April 1903. That day passed with no reduction in Russian forces in that region. 34. In Japan. University students demonstrated both against Russia and against their own government for not taking any action. 34. On 28 July 1903 Karino Shinichiro, the Japanese minister in St. Petersburg, was instructed to present his country's view opposing Russia's consolidation plans in Manchuria. On 3 August 1903 the Japanese minister handed in the following document to serve as the basis for further negotiations.